Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons, and we're going to talk about Matthew Mercer, and we're going to talk about Stranger Things, and I'm going to ask the question, does season one of Stranger Things prove that Matthew Mercer handled the Orion Acaba, um, the Orion Acaba situation wrong? I think the answer is yes, and I'm going to give you my, my I'm going to present my evidence for it today. All right, here we go. All right, so um, so let's. You know, I, Orion Okaba, he's the peat best of Critical Role. He he was he's the Moses, right? He got to the edge of Canaan, right? And he looked over and he saw this beautiful land, right? That all the Israelites were going to go into, right? You know, and the Israelites get to go into this beautiful Canaan, this promised land, right? And guess what? So in this analogy. The Israelites are Matthew Mercer, Laura Bailey, uh, Marisha Ray, Travis Willingham, Sam Rigel, Taliesin Jaffe. But who's the Moses? The Moses is Orion Akaba, and he's at the glass looking in, and he's not allowed into glory, money, wealth, power, influence, celebrity. He is never allowed to enter Canaan, right? No promised land for you, Orion Akaba. You're out. You're done. Yes, Sam Rigel does pretty much every single thing you do. But Sam Rigel gets to come in, but you don't. Orion Akaba, you're out. Right? Now, why talk about this? Right? Scott, isn't that, you know, Matthew Mercer's business? No, it is not. Right? What what Orion Akaba does, what Matthew Mercer does with Orion Akaba is the Dungeons and Dragons community's business. Matthew Mercer is all up in our D&D business, right? He has made, he has massively impacted the, the Matthew Mercer effect. You, know, you don't know what it is? Shove over one video to the right or one video to the left and you'll hear it. There's a thousand on YouTube that talk about the Matthew Mercer effect. He impacts games. He impacts the D&D community directly, right? So what he chooses to do with a player is our business and we should focus on it, right? So I think a lot of people are like, oh, Orion Akava was a problem player. Just kick him out. That's the solution. Done. Right? It's interesting. I hear you. Right? But I just watched season one of Stranger Things, and they said, that's crap. If you're a Dungeons and Dragons party, you don't just kick people out. Right? You know what they showed in, D in Stranger Things season one? They said, if one player strikes another player, strikes, physically strikes them, your party should have a system to resolve that. And make sure that everybody has a path to remain in the party and that there needs to be forgiveness and there needs to be apologies, right? So Lucas says, I don't want L in the group, right? Here's how the fight came about. Here's how physical strike came about, right? So, and it, listen to this, right? Because this is how a party resolved the same problem that Orion Akaba was doing with problem, you know, problem behavior from a player, right? And the party, the, the critical role party, who is all our businesses now because they pretty much like carry Dungeons and Dragons on their back now, right? Um, so basically, they're like, oh, problem problem player behavior. Oh, Ryan Akaba, you're out and you're unforgiven forever. You're out. Hey, we're going to wave from you in the promised land. How's it out there in the desert, right? That's what Matthew Mercer's doing right now. He holds Orion Akaba's fate in his hand, right? And he's saying, you stay in the desert. We're over here in Canaan. You don't belong here, right? Even though Orion Akaba was from the gate party, right? Now, that would be okay if I hadn't watched Stranger Things. Listen to this, okay? So here's what happens in Stranger Things Season 1, okay? Lucas says, Eleven doesn't care about our group. She is stopping us from finding Will, our best friend, and a member of our party. She is to be excluded. Problem behavior. Like, actually, that's not even problem behavior from, from Lucas. He's 100% right. Eleven is lying to them and misleading them and making sure they do not find Will. Lucas was 100% right, right? Mike gets upset and physically strikes Lucas. Physically strikes Lucas, right? way worse than anything Orion Akaba did, right? Physically struck him, right? You know what Dustin says? He doesn't say, Lucas, you physically struck another player in this uh, in this group. You're out, you're done. 
He says, hey, uh, I'm Dustin, and you're Lucas, and that's Mike. And I'm going to go to you, Mike, and say, you know what, Mike? You struck Lucas. I'm going to take you to Lucas, and you're going to apologize, and you're going to say you were wrong because you drew first blood. And we as a party have a pact that we keep the party together, right? And if there's problem behavior, we fix it within the party. And we prepare for conflict to erupt between us. And Dustin takes Mike to Lucas and Mike says, ah, real apology, I am sorry, I was wrong. I shouldn't have struck you, you know, like. And then Lucas is like, Lucas takes time and does not shake his hand, right? And Dustin's like, hey, we all agreed on this. We have a powerful pact as a party. We stay together. And when there's problem material, when there's problem activity between us, we fix it. That's how a play, that's how a party remains stitched together. And we don't leave anyone behind. Not Will, not Lucas, not you, Mike. We fix it. All right? And we stick together and we support each other. IRL, just like we do in D&D. Dungeons and Dragons. Right? And you know what Lucas is? Luke, and Lucas says, yep. Puts his hand out. Forgiveness. Problem solved. Now, if junior high boys could do that in Stranger Things and see the wisdom of it, and I see the wisdom of it, and I think that is the correct model, right? All of it. You need the apology. You need the genuine apology. All of that, right? Then, and to my knowledge, Orion Akaba has acknowledged that what he did was wrong, right? So I think you you may have the, the apology that's already there. Then it comes back and says, hey, is it okay for Matthew Mercer now being one of the most about being un un uncontested the best dungeon master in the world getting the wealth the influence the power right the comfort the celebrity right of critical role which Orion Akaba was there at the beginning at Vox Machina and laid the foundation stones with Matthew Mercer is it okay for Matthew Mercer to say you said some bad words and we didn't like your behavior, you're gone, and you're never back in. I don't think so. I think it's wrong. I think Matthew Mercer owes Orion Akaba a chance at redemption. And because Matthew Mercer is holding Orion Akaba at this point by his own choices out of this incredible promised land, and we're all witnessing it, I'm gonna say I'm gonna be first one to say it. I think Orion Akaba deserves a second chance. If he is willing to fully apologize for his behavior and say I am ready to return and I'm sorry for what I did to the people in the party, which exactly the same way Mike did, then Matthew Mercer must give him a chance to bring back in. I'm a DD community member. Matthew Mercer is a Dungeons and Dragons. DM. He's the best one in the world, and he's leading the most powerful, famous group of players in the world. And as a member of the D&D community, I am asking Matthew Mercer, give Orion Akaba a chance to apologize and bring him into Canaan. Right? Bring him into the promised land. It's horribly cruel to keep him out at this point, in my humble opinion. And that's a lesson learned from season one of Stranger Things. And Stranger Things ain't nothing but another D&D &D show on television. Oh, that's my opinion. What do you think? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below. Please consider liking and subscribing. And have a wonderful millennium.